Uh, so I wanted to have a discussion on how to trade using the average true range. So uh, what you might do, first of all, is select the period that you want the range to be selected. So I have an eight period, um, and that will take the average value of the range over eight periods. So uh, that could be days, it could be uh, hours, it could be 15 minutes, five minutes, one minute interval. So all the charts will be based on eight intervals. So I just thought that the number eight, if you go back eight, I kind of want to know the average here. If you do it too much, then you kind of get too many candles to uh, kind of make that average over. So you kind of want to find a sweet spot that you like. Um, and once you do, you select that period. So I have eight here. Um, I would say around five, eight, anything lower than eight is a little bit tricky because once you get to five, it's kind of getting pretty uh, quick uh, response time from that. But So assuming that you already understand what the average true range is, um, basically it's a measure of the volatility, uh, you can start to use that to help you make better trading decisions. So in general, uh, if you're in the business of making money in the stock market, uh, when there is change in the market, that's when you want to be trading. Um, it's not always a good sign in terms of positive or negative. Um, sometimes uh, volatility going up can be positive. Um, a lot of times uh, when the volatility is high, like you can see here, uh, the price was declining. So uh, volatility uh, isn't always considered a good thing in the market, and a lot of people would argue that it's not a good thing. Um, but on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, you just need to know uh, what the volatility is and what time periods you would like to trade in uh, oftentimes depend on the ATR or average true range. So one of the main ways I like to trade the ATR is to look at the percentage point difference per day um, and then use that down to the minute chart. So what I mean by that is that so the average true range is about 10 points, uh, 11 points right now. So if I measure that right here and I say 11 points, that's about 2.6% move. So anything above or below either half that, uh, which would be 1.3%, so it could be 1.3% down and then 1.3% up, uh, effectively making it for a 2.6%. So you kind of want to divide it by half, um, or you could say, uh, certainly by if it goes up 2.6%, uh, it's quite a big move in the market for one day. So how do you use that information? So we know that a 10 point move um, or a 2.3% move is about all we can expect or 1.3% in one direction is a good uh, rational move for the day. Now here is a per minute chart. Um, so what a 1% move, so I already know that this move from here to here um, is about a 1.3% move. So now from here to here, you see about a 2.3% move. So you can see that in a given day period time, this was a huge move in the market. Um, like we had about a 6% jump in the market and you see a huge average to range right here and then kind of a leveling off, right? So how do you use this to trade? Basically, uh, you know that certain moves in the daytime can only be a certain amount. Um, and you can use that to help you find reversals in the market uh, specifically. So what I mean by that, basically when you have an average to range that gets too high or too low, uh, you can basically see that the average range is around 0.3 uh, points uh, per minute, right? So if it goes above that by too much, you know that either you're going too high or you're kind of in a breakout situation. So this probably was a breakout right here, or you could say, uh, a lot of turbulence in the market right in this pocket right here. So let's mark off uh, this average two range in two horizontal lines. So you kind of have a lower threshold and then we kind of have an upper threshold. And then we kind of have a midpoint somewhere in here. And actually let's do that in different colors. So we got a different midpoint color. And we got a midpoint right around there. So how do you know how to use the ATR? So basically, this midpoint, anything above the midpoint, you typically want to be involved in the trades. 
Um, there's a lot of action in the market um, and you'll see bigger moves. So basically all of this, you could have known to be in this trade beforehand, right? So this is a good trade to be in. Now the catch is that the market was going down here um, and you had to recognize that it would be a positive move. But you can see that the ATR right in here, uh, prior to that big move, uh, was positive above the average. So that means you should be in the trade. Um, and you can see that all this was great trading uh, if you got involved in that trade. So that's an example right there. And you can see even after the trade was over for quite some time, um, there was still some move on the upside here um, and then also on the downside a little bit that made some sense to be involved in. Now, at a certain point, uh, you can see that the ATR started to kind of become flat uh, and below zero, so that was maybe bad trading to be involved in. So this is very slow trading uh, right here and this part here, but it actually was down. So, uh, and then you can just kind of see a midpoint here. So, uh, and then only part in the day, other part in the day that was good trading is basically back in here too. Now the one fault with the ATR is it is a purely price gauge. It does not tell you about the volume. So typically, uh, I use a volume oscillator to really tell me about trading because if I see a lot of volume, uh, then I also know that that means a good trading period as well. So I drew a kind of a midpoint here so you can kind of see uh, where the heavy trading was on this. Um, you can see there was definitely a downtrend here uh, to be involved with. Um, and then even right in here, there's a big uptrend as well to be involved with. So. Uh, it can be hard to detect those uh, unless you really watch it very carefully. Now, one other recommendation I would have is that if you're looking at these and you see kind of these cycles in here, this is due to the uh, nighttime or daytime uh, or opening versus close uh, strategy. So there is a lot of movement in the market right at the start of the day and sometimes right at the end of the day. So that's why you see these two little humps, typically a big hump and then a small hump, a big hump and a small hump. So that's basically from the start of the day and the end of the day. Um, to get rid of that, what you might want to do is change to a lower time frame or even a higher time frame. Uh, so at the lower time frame, you can start to see uh, different uh, perspectives. You see these two humps again, um, but it gives you a little bit more insight sometimes. And if you get down to the minute chart, uh, typically you can get uh, intraday uh, ATR, which is pretty good uh, to see. So on this, you can see very clearly the start of the day spike and then at the end of the day spike. So you can see there's kind of a lot of change right at the end of the day here and the start of the day. And every day will kind of be like that. You can kind of see a little bit of a spike here. This was actually quite a small spike compared to this, but this was a huge jump on the 10th. Uh, that was quite unusual. So to restate the trading philosophies, that in general, when the ATR is low, that means you're gonna have very choppy trading, meaning there's not gonna be much ups, there's not gonna be much downs. It is gonna be pretty much flat. So that's no price changes in here. Um, although you do see a positive price change, it's very slight up and downs in here. So. Uh, on the higher ATRs, you're going to see uh, basically bigger price moves uh, and more money to be made uh, on those moves. So this was probably interesting trading in here. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my study of the ATR. Uh, if you got any questions, be sure to ask questions down below. Uh, I'd be glad to talk with you about it in detail. Hope this has helped you a lot. Thanks.